He is perhaps the most mysterious person in the Bible, a man who was greater than Abraham, and yet we know almost nothing about him. But now we're going to open up the awesome mystery of Melchizedek. In the Book of Mysteries, the teacher leads the disciple into the chamber of books and to a large volume, an old worn book, opens it up to a page that shows an image, has Hebrew writing and a lithograph, a mystical looking man laying hands on another man as if to bless him. Now Melchizedek is one of the most mysterious figures in scripture, king and priest of God most high. He was a shadow of the Messiah who was to come. Melchizedek. There is so much mystery surrounding this one. People have all sorts of speculations. But Melchizedek, even in his name, there's a mystery. It contains two Hebrew words. Melki, like Malki or Melchizedek, and Sedek. Melki or Malki means king. It comes from Malek or Melek, king. It means to rule, to reign. And Sedek means righteousness. It comes from the word Sadak means to make right, to justify, the ministry of the priests. So put it together, you have a king and a priest. But according to the law of Israel, you could never be king and priest. You could either be king or priest. The king could never be priest, and the priest could never be the king. Just, you could not. You had two houses. You had the house of David, the king, and you had the house of Aaron, the priests, you know, the temple and the palace, you could never join them. But Melchizedek was both, but he was before the law from the time of Abraham. And so Melchizedek gives his blessing to Abraham. From Abraham comes the kingship of Israel, David, and also the priesthood of Israel, Aaron, and all the rest. Under the law, they were always to keep apart, could never be the same. But it was prophesied in the Hebrew Scriptures that one day, the two would again become one in Messiah. Messiah would be both priest and king. But Messiah couldn't be born of both houses. He could only be born, he was born of the house of David. He's the king, the royal line. So then he would have to receive the blessing back of the priesthood from the house of Aaron. So what happened? How did Messiah's ministry begin? He went to the Jordan, and what happened? Who was there? John the Baptist, remember the mystery of that? John the Baptist was a son of Aaron. He was the true priest of Israel. And what happens at the Jordan River is a transfer of the priesthood to Messiah. That Messiah whose king would become the priest king. It would be the priesthood of Melchizedek. So when Messiah came to the Jordan, it was as if Melchizedek had returned to receive back the blessing given to Abraham from the house of Aaron to get it back to the royal house of the king. And actually, Jesus said, we have to do this. John said, we can't do it. He said, we have to do it to fulfill righteousness. Righteousness in Hebrew is tzedek. That's the Melchizedek. That's the priestly part. So in Messiah, it all comes together. He's the king who's the priest. And why is that so important? It's like you're appearing in court and the judge who's gonna judge you, he could judge you, he's also your defense attorney. The judge, the king, is your defense attorney. So what it means is Messiah, who is the king of kings, the almighty God, the judge, has now become your priest, your defense attorney. So now there is therefore now no condemnation in Messiah because the king has become your priest. The Zoroah is what? It's the power of God. 